Salam, and welcome to Eurasia. I am your host, David. From the Mongols to the modern day, the Crimean Tartar people have a largely untold history that spans 800 years. It is my hope today that you will learn a little bit more about the Crimean Tartar's history and even be inspired to look up more by yourself. Without further ado, let's get started right now. Tartar refers to someone from Tartaria, or Tartary, which, though there is many definitions, is a Latin word to describe what is now Western Central Asia. Tartaria consists of modern-day areas of Western Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, as well as Southern Russia. During the Mongol invasions of the 13th and 14th centuries, many Tartars agreed to fight with the Mongols in their conquests out west. However, as the Mongol Empire began to fall, Many of these Tartars decided to settle and create their own khanates in the region. Of many others, one of these were the Tartars who decided to settle in modern-day Crimea. This is the start of the Crimean Tartar history. Soon thereafter, the Crimean Tartars established the Crimean Khanate. The first leader of the Crimean Khanate, Hasigarai, fought against both the Mongols and internal competitors from 1428 to 1449 in order to secure the creation of the Crimean Khanate. By 1449, the Crimean Khanate was fully established. At the time, the Crimean Khanate retained much of its Tartar history and was more or less indistinguishable to other Tartars in the region. But, as time passed, the Crimean Tartars created their own unique culture. Yet, soon after the creation of the Crimean Khanate, the Ottoman Empire soon vassalized the relatively small Khanate. Concerning this, however, most Crimean Tartars were unaffected and indifferent because the Ottomans and Crimean Tartars had much in common. Both the Ottomans and the Crimean Tartars spoke similar Turkic languages. They both shared the Black Sea, and perhaps most importantly, they both practiced Islam. In 1475, the Ottomans had chased out some European trading posts in the region and, in the process, requested more obedience from the Crimean Khanate. Nonetheless, under the Ottomans, the Crimean Tartars enjoyed relative prosperity. Though subject to the Ottomans, the Ottomans treated the Crimean Khanate more like allies. In fact, the Ottomans even paid the Crimean Khanate instead of demanding tribute. The Ottomans also highly liked the Crimean Tartars for their cavalry skills. Crimean Tartars helped win decisive battles for the Ottomans from Persia to Poland. Although this relationship slowly became more tense and controlling over the years, the Ottomans and Crimean Khanate kept a good relationship with one another. On the other hand, with others in the area, the Crimean Khanate was often at war with them. This is especially evident with other Tartar Khanates and Muscovy. The Crimean Khanate even burnt Moscow to the ground in 1571. At the time, the Crimean Khanate was the superpower of the region, and they exerted their might upon those who were not friendly. However, they also helped those in the region who were friendly, with exceptions, the Crimean Khanate generally had a good relationship with the Polish-Lithuania Commonwealth and traded with them often. In the worst of situations, however, the Crimean Khanate could always rely on the Ottomans for protection. But, with the slow decline of the Ottomans starting in the late 1600s, the Crimean Khanate soon started to fall as well. By the middle of the 17th century, Russia took advantage of the failing empires and began attacking and raiding the Crimean Tartars. This fighting only became more intense and destructive for the Crimean Tartars as time went on. After the Russo-Turkish War of 1768 to 1774, the Ottomans lost control of the Crimean Khanate and it was vassalized by the Russian Empire. By 1783, the Russians completely controlled the Crimean Khanate and absolved the state. As already evident, unlike the Ottomans, the Russians wished to see the complete destruction of the Crimean Tartars. Starting in 1783 until the collapse of the Russian Empire in 1917, Crimean Tartars who did not completely accept Russian rule and culture were killed or forced to leave. This is the start of the Crimean Tartar diaspora. With the creation of the Soviet Union, life became even more difficult for the Crimean Tartars. The Crimean Peninsula was badly affected by collectivization, and soon after Stalin's appointment as chairman, he exiled all Crimean Tartars out of Crimea due to some Crimean support for the Germans. Most of the population was forced into Central Asia. Though the population of Crimea's Crimean Tartar population was at about 150,000 in 1925, 
There were absolutely no Crimean Tartars on Crimea by the end of World War II. In the ensuing years, the vast majority of Crimean Tartars were taken to gulags, where nearly half of them would die. Even after the gulag system was largely abandoned and Crimean Tartars were absolved of any charges in 1967, Crimean Tartars were not allowed to return to Crimea until the mid-1980s. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, many Crimean Tartars returned to Crimea. However, most Crimean Tartars today remain in Central Asia, Turkey, and elsewhere. Soon after Crimea's inclusion into Ukraine, Crimean Tartars, remembering the recent past, created the organization called Mejilis of the Crimean Tartar People. This organization and political party is a representative body of the Crimean Tartars that addresses concerns of the Crimean Tartar people to the Crimean, Ukrainian, foreign, and international governments. After being classified by the Russian government as a terrorist organization in 2016, the organization has urged the UN and Ukraine to take action against Russia. Russia continually pushes against Crimean Tartars in Crimea even today. However, though it may seem like Russia is the antagonist in the situation, it may be that there never was a protagonist to begin with. Though Ukraine originally welcomed the creation of the Mejilis of the Crimean Tartar people in the 1990s, the Ukrainian government slowly took over the organization. While it seems that most Crimean Tartars are not fully bothered by this, it does not change the fact that, today, the Ukrainian president and other politicians have the power to appoint any member to the organization. Only after Russia's de facto control over Crimea did Ukraine start to allow the organization more freedom. Today, Crimean Tartars are still dealing with the repercussions of the Crimean Tartar diaspora. Compared with 2 million people who live in Crimea today, only about 250,000 Crimean Tartars live in Crimea. But, another 250,000 Crimean Tartars live abroad, especially in Turkey, Ukraine, and Uzbekistan. To summarize, the Crimean Tartars have a long history filled with prosperity and hardship. Though the Crimean Peninsula itself thrives today, we see the Crimean Tartars at a very critical point in their people's history. However, with such a rich culture and unique identity in the region, we can only hope that their traditions continue. Though this video talked about the history of the Crimean Tartar people, if you would like to see more about the culture and traditions of the Crimean Tartar people, leave a comment below. If you haven't already, subscribe and like the video as well. Until next time, stay happy, stay humble, stay hopeful, and goodbye.